Hello, these are my last few days in this gorgeous place that I've been living in for the past couple of weeks. I'm currently standing in a cornerstone of um, cold climate permaculture, which is the glass house. To trap in heat, a very important resource in cold climates, um, they're able to grow things ahead of season um, when it's still frosting and still quite cold outside and also grow things that they wouldn't otherwise be able to grow due to the temperature, such as tomatoes. And there's an, even an avocado in one of their other ones, um, but I don't know if it will ever produce fruit. So this system in and of itself is quite fantastic. They change out the soil perhaps every two years um, and nutrify it with marinure, um, a product from the ocean. Now that isn't quite sustainable and they may need to find another way as times come. There's no reason I don't think that they can't fertilise it with um, with animal manure um, but that bridge will be crossed as it is. Um, they have toilet rolls to put up their plants so the toilet rolls can go directly into the ground um, and have all sorts of things. Grapes, um, even banana passion fruit, um, which they have heard that someone got half a dozen um, once, one year. So I would be putting my efforts into something different, but incredible nonetheless. I have these water drums with it all over. It's a um, relatively small back garden um, with um, just an elderly couple looking after it all. Um, but these water tubs are a fantastic way of catching any little anything that they can get. And they get 600 mils a year of water. Um, these beds littered all throughout their forest garden. They have tree propagation here. I dug um, some hazels into the ground and the roots just keep getting chopped back a little and then put back in so that they can keep um, being alive and growing but their roots not getting too big to be dug up and potted into trees for people. Um, in here there was a big infestation of this stuff called ground elder, a great crop for chopping and dropping um, but intense roots that grow through um, wood, grow through everything. They're um, very tenacious growers. Um, all through there where it hasn't been kept back. Um, yeah this stuff's pretty <clears throat> pretty matted everywhere and its roots get really really thick that compost pile over there around the back is just ground elder roots um, so keeping it out of the garden bed so that selected crops can be grown we've got um, onions and carrots and garlic and carrots and garlic and carrots and parsnip um, interwoven there's strawberries and potatoes behind it some potato towers um, so you build up tyres Put potatoes in the bottom of the tyres and as the potatoes grow you keep adding soil so that they have to grow up and up and up and keep growing more and more potatoes. Quite an easy and simple way to grow lots of potatoes. And these are their compost bays. They have these scattered all over the garden. Um, they build up compost and just let it sit. They don't turn it at all. It's a no-turn compost method. Here's an example of a finished one that isn't infested with ground elder. They put carpet over the top to suppress any growth coming out the top of it. And then in the hole, they'll plant um, a squash or some sort of other cucurbacy. Um, it's normally cucurbacy because it rambles everywhere. Um, be like a squash or a pumpkin because it's too cold to grow lots of other things. Uh, and in here, they have their quail. The quail just produce tiny little eggs, I think. I'm not sure if they're intended to be meat birds or not. Um, they need some feeding. I'll get them some feed. Uh, all through here is their food forest garden. They have prolific apple trees. Look at that flower. That's incredible, hey? Lots and lots and lots of apples to come. Lots of pears, lots of walnuts, lots of different types of walnuts, heart nuts, and a gorgeous stone wall. That is mined by birds and all sorts of insects for its products to build nests and for grit and things like that. Lots of apple trees, 
um, for sale. It also doubles as a nursery, this little back garden. It's amazing how much they've crammed into such a little space, really. Um, yeah, some more apple trees, more pear trees, big, I think that's a heart nut. Um, it's in the same genus as a walnut, the juggling family. The jugglins of its genus. And throughout this garden, actually, I might take you to where it is. Um, something I've learnt about cold climates, particularly this cold climate, is that there are no um, native um, leguminous trees, no native nitrogen fixing trees, they're all herbaceous, like clover and um, different shrubs and things. They have broom and gorse, which is the closest thing to a tree they've got, but um, they've got one from it could have been maybe Siberia or some, something like that, but I've done something gorgeous with it. I've arched it over. This is laburnum. It's very, very poisonous, but fixes nitrogen into the ground, so fantastic for all those buddies around it. As you can see with these um, currents going off, going mental. Um, yeah, it's seeds are all coming. Um, quite an amazing thing. And then there was another legume that um, Graham, my teacher, did not know about uh, called Leptospermum? No. It's called Thermopsis. Leptospermum is an Australian um, native that's quite beautiful. But um, Thermopsis is a um, legume that was given to Graham. Right, I'll show you this. Little greenhouses for the plants. Cut heat in. Um, it's supposed to protect them from slugs, but there are definitely slugs getting in. You can see it from the trails all over the place. Um, it will need to be changed. This will need to get bigger. It's just to protect them from the pheasants and pigeons that really like brassicas. In here we see a very diverse polyculture of perennial salads and broad beans and carrots and all sorts of other crazy things. Angelica. There's some angelica over here that got cut down to be turned into um, candied angelica. Quite interesting. And now we're back at the red shed. So, there you have it. Cold climate food soup food forestry. We have herbaceous, little shrubs, abundant ground covers, and strawberries would be a good replacement for this ground elder if it could be done. Then um, bigger trees, bigger shrubbier things, actual trees, taller trees, and big grand overstories. What a layered little temperate food forest. Incredible.